Hello. Hello there. And welcome to this edition of Puzzle Talk Live. I'm your host, Erin O'Brien. And this show is all about making it through. Excuse me. The coronavirus shutdown, one puzzle at a time. My screen's doing things. Which gets me to my disclaimer. Uh, as some of you know, uh, I'm not a professional. And so if this is crappy, that's why. I, it's just me in my office with a crappy iPad recording this show. So that's what you get. I'm just a, I'm just a Hungarian chick with a bunch of puzzles and I come on here and I talk about them. Now I like to start the show. I always like to start the show. Uh, actually, not always. I just started this last week, but I'm going to do it again this week. The puzzle I am working on now. Friends and neighbors. Oh, incidentally, if you didn't know, this is the uh, this is the Animal Kingdom edition. But the first puzzle I'm going to show you doesn't have to do with animals, but that's okay. Here's the puzzle I am working on now. It is a it is called the Harvest. It is an artwork by Vincent Van Gogh from 1888. It is a vintage Springbok that I bought for a couple of bucks at a thrift store, and it is a beautiful puzzle. I am hoping it's complete, but quite frankly, I'm not too. I'm hoping, but I don't know if it's going to be complete or not. I guess we're going to find out. All right. Let's get to the animals. Perhaps it's no surprise that I'm going to start this show with a couple of puzzles that feature bunnies. Now, uh, I love, I really love bunny puzzles because I just, I love bunnies. I actually never really cared that much about bunnies. I mean, yeah, they were cute and everything. And maybe you have a chocolate bunny on Easter, but I never really cared until I had a pet bunny. And she was a good bunny. She was a righteous bunny. She was a good, righteous bunny. You know, she hop, hop, hop. And, and then she went, she, went to, uh, she went to bunny heaven. And so uh, now that I've said goodbye to my pet bunny, uh, I, whenever I see a, what I like, a, a puzzle that I like that features a bunny, I buy it. And um, this one's kind of weird, but we're going to start with this. It's a Zozoville puzzle by Hay. What you have on this puzzle is a giant, it's a monster bunny, it's a monster bunny, and it's screaming at a carrot. Okay, I don't know what that means, I don't care what it means, I did this puzzle, it was a fun puzzle, this puzzle rocked my face off. So this is the first animal puzzle, it's a bunny puzzle, bunny, monster, carrot, I'm down. Next puzzle. I purchased this puzzle at a place called Loganberry Books here in Cleveland, Ohio. And if you have never been there, you need to go there because it rocks your face off. Hi, Harriet. All right, Jean Bradbury. And it's called We Are Not Alone, We Are Not Alone. And I love this puzzle in particular because it's, it's a little white bunny and it's a spirit bunny. It's a spirit bunny and I dig that. Oh, I think I forgot to mention that I am... I'm drinking my uh, god-awful cheap vodka, and it's mixed with some kind of fruit shit. I don't know what it is. I just drink it. All right, so that puzzle came from Loganberry Books, which is located on Larchmere, Larchmere, in the Larchmere District here in Cleveland. And I'm going to, I got to just everybody hold, just hold the hell on. This is my show, and if I want to do this, I'm going to do this. I received in the mail, kick my ass, just blow me over. It is a Josh Simpson puzzle. Josh is a glass artist, and I'm hoping this is a round puzzle. I don't know. I'm probably going to do it next. But I got this from my friends at Larchmere Fireworks. And they are located right across the street from Loganberry. And if you're ever on Larchmere and they're doing a glass blowing demonstration, you need to get your ass over there and watch it because it's it's great. It's great. It's great. Anyhow, so they sent me this great puzzle that is probably the puzzle I will do next. Okay, back to the animals because I just kind of went over there. But that's all right. It's all right. Oh, hey. My eyeglass chain features two little bunnies and they're upright if the eyeglasses are hanging down but when they're on my fist the, the bunnies are upside down but that's okay because I think that you can handle it all right this that's coming up 
All right, you all know that I have a fraught, a fraught and difficult relationship with Springbok, okay? And I'm not talking about that yet. Uh, I'll talk about that eventually, but I'm not talking about that yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a puzzle. I'm just showing you a puzzle. It's called a family puzzle. Why is it called that? It's called a family puzzle because it has different sized pieces. It has great big pieces for, you know, little Joey and little Johnny, and it has smaller pieces for adults. So the whole family can work on this puzzle and I have to admit, it is a newer Springbok. It is probably one of the, I only have like two new Springboks because the Springbok thing, but we're not going there now. We're not going on the Springbok thing. <clears throat> it's called School of Fish. And it's just this hilarious image. And, I, you know, it's all taped up. But anyhow, it's a family puzzle from Springbok. And if you are going to buy a new Springbok puzzle, these are four or 500 pieces. They are a blast. And look at it. I just love this image. I mean, didn't we all have a teacher that looked like that when we were in third grade? I think so. I think we did. <laughs> Hi, Miss Miss Murtis, if you're out there. Look what I grew up. See how successful I became. There, that's what happened to Aaron O'Brien. All right. Now we're having another puzzle. Okay, this, this is what it's like. Okay, this is what it's like. This is what it's like. Um, we are having a, uh, wait, hold on. I need a moment there. Okay. Sometimes a puzzle make is such that even if I don't, this is where I go. Even if I don't like the image, I buy the puzzle anyway. I buy the puzzle anyway because I love the puzzle quality so much. And that's when I'm talking about a vintage Eaton puzzle. I wish you could feel how heavy this puzzle is. It's a vintage, it's a vintage Eaton and it features this, it's a little bird, and it's not a terrible image, it's not an Aaron image, it's not something I would normally do, but I love vintage Eatons, because they're almost, well, they're a similar quality to a vintage Springbok, that when I see this at a thrift store for a buck, I buy it because I know I'm going to enjoy doing the puzzle, because the feel of the pieces and everything else. And you know what, I'm not gonna lie to you, I will learn something when I do that puzzle. I'm gonna learn something about this stupid little effing bird, there he is, you know, singing at me or whatever. I do the puzzle. Eventually, I'm going to do the puzzle, and I'll probably like the puzzle, okay? I don't know what's going to happen, but that's what it's like. You don't know when you do a puzzle what's going to happen to you. You don't know. Here's another puzzle that's really weird. This is another puzzle that is not an Aaron image, but it is such a, it's such a unique puzzle that I bought it, and I don't remember if I ever did it or not. I have two of these. One of them I did and one the other one I didn't do. I can't remember if I did it. I don't know. I don't know if I did it or not. So, you know, what are you going to do? Call the police for Christ's sake? Hold on. World's most difficult jigsaw puzzle. So it's got a unicorn. We got this guy here. I like him. There's a skull. But I, I picked it because of the unicorn and the snake. Unicorn and the snake. And it's the same image on both sides of the puzzle. So that's just like, that's hilarious. And I did one of these before. I don't think it was this one. And it's hard, but it's not the worst thing that ever happened to you. You will live through it. You will, you will inhale and exhale when you complete this puzzle. You will complete this puzzle. Uh, I should do this maybe. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Would you look at that? Oh. Huh. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little prize. Let's see what's in here. Oh, it's a pork rind. Great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> More puzzles. I just bought this puzzle. It was, uh, uh, it was, um, I think it was at the, it wasn't the Warhol Museum. Where the heck was I? I can't remember which museum I was at. King Kong, haven't done it yet. Looks great, fun, yeah. So Animal Kingdom, King Kong, he makes it into this collection. Y'all know this next guy coming up. You do. <laughs> Another vintage Springbok. I can't help myself. Somebody stop me, okay. Great, great vintage Springbok. Wait, my nose is killing me. Itchy, itchy, itchy. Hurt me. Sorry. Sorry. Vintage Springbok. And you know what? 
I kept this one. It's like missing like three pieces, but what are you going to do, man? Hey, it's missing a few pieces, but it, it's, that's a classic. And, uh, okay, Mickey, I don't care that much about Mickey Mouse. Hey, Walt Disney wasn't, he was, a, you know, Walt Disney was a son of a bitch. Did you know that the constitution like kind of doesn't apply in Walt Disney world? I think that's true. Look it up. Cause what, what good is a, what good is a, what good is a puzzle talk without a little bit of, you know, controversial, go get your tinfoil hat on. All right, uh, this next puzzle is one of my favorite puzzles in my collection. Now, I bought this puzzle at, okay, and that's why I was saying about the bird. Maybe I'm going to like the bird. I'm not going to like the bird. I don't know. But this puzzle, sorry. Mm. Woo! This puzzle is another vintage Springbok, and I saw it, and I'm like, buy it, Aaron, because it's a vintage Springbok. Because it's not, it's it's a horse puzzle. And I'm like, who, I, I don't want to do some horse puzzle. It's dumb. But I, so I just bought it. And then I found out, of course, it was a lot more than a horse puzzle. Now I want to show you something here. You see the horses? Now if I cover this up, I don't know if you can see this. It looks like the black horse is in front of the beige horse. And then if you do this, you see that it's it's a visual illusion. And why is that cool? It's cool because so the artist does this visual illusion on this really pastoral image. And what makes it great, what makes it totally great, where are you, is that the artist is named, where are we? Uh, I got to read this. I don't, Amzi Emmons Zeleth was the artist and he was he, he was born in 1831 and he died in 1915 so he was doing this visual like trick on this piece of artwork in the 1800s and so I bought it for a buck maybe two bucks it was complete it's a great old vintage springbok and so yeah there there's a surprise in owning a puzzle I dig the horse puzzle I dig it I'm just going to show you this next one because it doesn't need any other thing. You don't need anything but to just look at it. I haven't done this guy yet. I'm going to do this guy and I'm going to get to know him and we're going to be friends for a long time. Okay. Sir John Tenniel. Sometimes uh, I collect puzzles based on subject like I have I think I showed you VW puzzle I collect v, if it, the subject is VW I collect the puzzles I collect bunny puzzles I also collect Alice puzzles and this one I haven't done it yet it's only 300 pieces I'm like saving it for when I'm stressed out and I just need an easy puzzle that's gonna just make me happy because it features the art of John Tenniel and we have the queen, we have some tarts, and I have um, like three Alice puzzles. Uh, one is a good housekeeping cover from, I don't know when, but this one, you know what? Oh, there's the bunny. There's the white rabbit. So uh, just love these, love these. Pomegranate art puzzle, pomegranate art puzzle, good quality puzzle. You will dig this puzzle if you buy this puzzle. Another one I collect, gentleman's name was William Wallace Denslow. Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. You know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cowardly Lion. The Cowardly Lion. And what do I love about these puzzles? It, it's just, it's a great old book. And if you ever read The Wizard of Oz, it's so different from uh, what you see on in, in the movie. It's like the Tin Man. He the witch cast a spell on him, and he ended up chopping off all his own limbs in the book. It's like really weird and violent and strange. And so, it, uh, Wizard of Oz puzzles, I like them. Although I probably I don't have one of the, of the Judy Garland and, and the characters from the movie. That's not really so much my thing. I really like the uh, Denslow images. And this puzzle, incidentally, was so easy. I did it. I like picked up a piece, put it in, picked it up, put it in. Really, really quick, fun puzzle. Okay. 
Now we are getting down to the last couple of puzzles. And as usual, uh, there's always something about these. So I have, they're lobster puzzles. Okay, there, I told you. It's lobster puzzles. Why the hell did somebody buy a lobster puzzle? <sighs> okay, my mother-in-law loved lobster. And she loved lobster, and sometimes we could have lobster, and she loved it. And lobster just, I always associated lobster with my mother-in-law. So when I see a lobster puzzle, I buy a lobster puzzle. This first one here, and I have to read the gentleman's name. This is, it was, it, it ran on the cover of Puck Magazine in June of 1914. And the gentleman's name, the artist was Brinolf Winterberg. And it's called the Serenade. And what is it? I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a lobster singing to a chick on a beach. Okay? Where do you get that? You don't get that anywhere else. Guess who else illustrated in Puck Magazine? Denslow. He did advertisements in there. Love that. Anyhow. So this is, uh, I bought this. Uh, it's a New York Puzzle Company puzzle. I bought it for a buck or two. It was it used uh, thrift store. It was complete Great puzzle. I love the lobster singing to the chick on the beach. Puck Magazine. Okay. All right. Lobster Lovers. This ran on the cover of Judge Magazine, which I just found this out. Judge Magazine was the main competition to Puck Magazine. So it's just hilarious to me that they both had lobster couple puzzles all years apart. Um... The artist listed in this, which you can go online and look at these entire magazines. I'll post a link someplace. It's called uh, Hathi Trust. And the artist is only listed as crisp. So I don't know what that means. But this is, um, what's this? Uh, I think it's 1912, March of 1912. And this was the cover of Judge Magazine. So let's talk a little bit about lobsters. My mother-in-law loved a dish called uh, lobsters and rice, which I had never heard of, but she loved it. And sometime in our marriage, she gives me this index card. It's like, you know, three by five index card. And she goes, here's the recipe for lobsters and rice. And then she hands me another gift, this massive, really heavy meat cleaver, which I should have brought up here, but I, I didn't. Anyhow, so... I'm like, obviously my mother-in-law wants me to make this lobsters and rice. So I'm going to make this lobsters and rice. I take the recipe out and it says, cut up live lobster, cook lobster in mazzola oil, add rice, cook rice. And I'm like, oh my God, how do I even do this? So I called Eric's aunt and she doesn't remember how to make it. Nobody remembers how to make it. So I just, I go, I get the lobsters and I get the lobster and I get the, meat cleaver and that's when things start to go south okay so I'm there in my kitchen and I don't want to have this experience with these lobsters but I have to it's a cut up lobster for this lobster and rice whatever I'm making and so the lobsters you know on his back looking at me and I'm you know getting ready with this cleaver to chop and it was bad anyhow so I'm holding the lobster, and then the, on the back of the lobster's table, there's these little fins that go, da, 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 and it's slimy, and I'm like, ah, la, and, they, and they start going like this, and I go, ah, and I start screaming, and then I, next thing I know, I'm throwing the lobster, the lobster goes all the way across the kitchen and lands, you know, like by the, I don't know, by the door, and the lobster's, <laughs> lobster's laying on the floor. Anyhow, so I don't know. I, I finished this. Uh, the other thing that they don't tell you about lobster is once you cut up a lobster and you think that that lobster is dead, no. Which is for a long time in different parts. So I made the lobsters and rice, and I, I don't know if it was any good. My mother-in-law ate it like it was the best thing she ever ate in her life, and, it, and she was great, and I thank her for that. I made it a couple more times, and, and then the, the last time I was making the lobsters and rice, I had by this time figured out that, you know, maybe if you go outside and do it on the, because you get covered with the ink and the lobster juice, and it's just not, it's not a good look. It's not cute. It's not who you want to be. Anyhow, so I was doing it on the picnic table, and even then, after a few times, I still remember throwing the lobster. The lobster goes in the bushes. I'm rinsing off the lobster. It was traumatic. 
anyhow, front door rings. So front door bell rings. Put down the lobster, put down the, the cleaver. And I go answer the door and it's my neighbor. It's my neighbor, Jane. And she's got a big, a big blue speckled roaster. And she goes, Aaron, I, I made you a chicken dinner. And I said, Jane, I said, I've been cooking all day long and I don't have a single thing to eat. And she goes, I know exactly where you're coming from. I, I know exactly what it's like. And of course, the reason that I had been cooking the whole day is because the next day was my mother-in-law's wake and I was making all the food and Jane brought us dinner that night. So that's why I buy lobster puzzles because it is never, it is never just about a puzzle. It is never just about a puzzle. All right, my friends. I'm Erin O'Brien. Thank you for listening to this edition of Puzzle Talk Live. I hope you enjoy your holiday weekend. And I love you. <laughs>